Good day everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noana Gabunada, so I've been in the real estate industry for 8 years already. Today, I am going to share you some of the terminologies and terms related to real estate. So, these are the common terms that I encountered on my 8 years in real estate industry. And these terms also are most commonly used by a few individuals so before I start if you are new to my channel please subscribe and feel free to comment on the comment box below so let's start unveiling some of the terms in real estate So first, we have to identify what is a real estate. Real estate, it is the land along with any permanent improvements attached to the land, whether natural or man-made, including water, trees, minerals, building homes, fences, and bridges. So that is the specific term or definition of a real estate. So it is basically a land. So either there is an improvement or not that is still a real estate because real estate it is defined as land itself so there are four types of real estate what are those first that is residential of course it is where you reside it is where few individuals live that is what do we call literally as residential second one is industrial where in factories warehouses are located or built that is industrial real estate and the next one is commercial real estate where where in malls offices or any space or certain development that will help you to generate income that is what we call commercial real estate the last one is vacant lot so the definition itself of a real estate terms as a one so vacant lot also part of the four types of real estate and real estate developer it is the company who develops build a real estate properties so they are the one who gonna buy finance real estate deals and they're gonna build projects create invention control and orchestrate the process of development those are called real estate developer some of the examples of real estate developers in the philippines are a yellow land fuel invest and more so there are a lot of companies here in the philippines that their main business is real estate those are real estate developer so real estate services means providing a service with respect to the purchase sale lease rental or appraisal of real property so real estate services also are composers of brokers and agents so those are companies who are engaged in selling and buying of properties and real estate broker it is a registered licensed person who is naturally engaged in selling solicit promote Mediate, negotiate, and exchange mortgage lease or joint venture in any real estate transactions. So those are real estate brokers, and real estate brokers has a license under PRC and HLARB. While real estate agent, a duly accredited person under the real estate broker. So in every one broker, they are entitled to have. 20 accredited real estate agent under their license and real estate agent also they can get a accreditation prc and actually rb under the real estate broker's license a reservation fee it, it is refers to a fee or deposit of a certain amount paid initially in order to hold or reserve a unit or a property so um this is really the first process of buying a property there is a reservation fee so reservation fee differs in amount depending on the property that you purchase and depending also the on the developer if how much 
reservation the required. Of course, reser reservation fee can be paid through cash, check, debit or credit, and wire transfer. These four ways of payment for the reservation fees is applicable not to all developers, but mostly most of the developers are using these types of payment for the reservation fee. While reservation agreement, this is an agreement frequently used in sale of new homes when a buyer reserves their unit or the property. So actually, reservation fee and reservation agreement goes together. So before you're gonna give the reservation fee to the developer or the seller, um, you're also required to sign the reservation agreement. Plus, even if the buyer or the investor are living abroad, they can also um, reserve the unit through online, online payments and online for the reservation agreement or SPA. So usually, reservation agreement states the certain period wherein the reservation fee take effect. So more or less like 30 to 45 days mostly, uh, those are the term most of the developers impose. And homeowners association, this is an association within your subdivision or a condominium. So usually if you are purchasing a property within a certain subdivision or condominium, you're part of the homeowners association. So the good thing with this is that you have the right to vote for the president or the officers for your certain association. Plus, you also have the right to voice out what you need, what it is needed to improve within your subdivision or within your condominium. So that's the power of the homeowners association. So you have the right like to impose where to put your garbage or where to where are some improvements. So those are the typical um, duties and responsibilities of homeowners association. But to be exact, um, Homeowners Association has the right to put um, some restrictions, obligations when it comes to the improvements of within your own community. So that is written on your own association also. And Homeowners Association dues or condominium dues, this is a fee or monthly payments that is made by the unit owner or homeowners association to contribute all over the expenses for the whole community or the condominium so usually for the housing the minimal amount required no it's the common um, not for the high-end subdivision but for the common low-end subdivision or the common subdivision they're gonna require one to two pesos per square meters payment for the homeowners association while for the condominium it's more or less like 80 to 100 pesos for the uh, condominium due so this will be used for the repairs for your maintenance for the roads that you have for the lights and for the security and for the other amenities so that's the use of our condominium juice. And the good thing with this, if you are part of the homeowners um, association, if you do have the and part of the condominium also is that you do have the lesser less responsibility when it comes to the less, um, common areas because that is already shared by the homeowners association and the condominium people's association. So home inspection, this is actually done the moment the unit will be torn over onto the homeowners. So usually this is really a third party who gonna inspect the unit. So this is needed for those property who are under a mortgage because um, the financing like the banks or the other financing institute wants to secure the investment that they acquire for the unit owner. So that's why they need to seek the um, safety if the wall is still intact, if there are no um, 
damage us when it comes to the, pro to the property before it will be turned over and before the owner can be can accept the unit so and actually home inspection also can be done by the unit owner because the moment that the unit will be turned over to the unit owner or yeah or to the homeowner before that will happen the developer will, will give you the checklist so that you can inspect if there are some pro problem with the unit turned over to you so you do have the right either to refuse or not to accept the unit if there are some problems or issues when it comes to the unit turned over amortization it is the practice of spreading an intangible assets cost over the assets useful life so usually amortization this is in our term it is a monthly amortization so example you after your down payment period like you are done paying the 20 percent and the moment the unit that was turned over to you the financing where you loan your house or your condominium is that they're gonna give you a piece of paper and it was written there that the, the time when you're gonna pay your monthly amortization to them so it's more or less like as unscheduled of your payment of amortization for your loan or for your housing so that's it annual percentage it is basically the annual percentage rate it is the amount of interest charge on your loan every year so that's why it is called annual percentage rate SPA so as what I have mentioned earlier is that you, um, any buyer investor or if you want to purchase a property and you are outside the country you can reserve or purchase the unit of the property that you are interested in using an SPA or, or special power of attorney or you can call directly to the developer so that they can arrange some arrangement for you so that it is easier for you to start or to invest or to purchase a property so special power of attorney it is a written document wherein one person the principal which is the buyer appoints and confers authority to another person or the agent itself to perform acts on behalf of the principal for one or more specific transaction so um, in our term, SPA is that you're going to authorize somebody to purchase, to sign your um, in behalf of you. So, if you're not available, that certain person can perform that task or the responsibility, um, obligations that you are stated on the SPA. So, there are different types or format for the SPA that is required for a certain transactions assumption this is when a seller transfer all terms and conditions a mortgage to a buyer the buyer takes the seller's remain remaining debt instead of taking out a new mortgage of their own so in our term is that um, if you are not going to pursue your purchase when when it comes to the property that you bought and you are not yet done with a payment example you purchase a certain property like a condominium then it's still on the bank and under the loan of the bank then if you don't want to pursue it anymore you can ask somebody to assume your unit to assume your unit so that that person can continue the responsibility that you have then you can transfer the title or the documents that the title under that person so that the responsibility you as the first owner will be transferred to that second owner that to gonna assume your unit so for the obligations responsibilities of the payment and the ownership of the property is uh is going to be taken or transferred to the person that you assume your unit so that what that's what you call assumption and there are also some requirements needed in order for you to 
proceed when it comes to assumption process. Balloon mortgage, this is a kind of a mortgage loan wherein there is no specific amount that you're going to pay every month. So, for example, um, the developer wanted, uh, the, based on the computation of the developer, for example, you're going to have, you are purchasing the amount of 5 million house and lot. Then the monthly estimated for that, for the 20%, is like so five percent for five million i'll check okay so that we will be specific okay so five million house we're gonna take the 20 percent of it as an equity that is one million and if the developer I wanted to pay that one on uh, for the specific buyer for 48 months so the monthly it's gonna be 20,833 for um, 48 months but if you are sh short of money for this for every month for example you only have you, you, you only have 15,000 monthly. So you're going to ask the developer, can you please um, approve, can you please approve me um, for the balloon type of payment? So this is just only an example. Balloon type of payment. Like I only want 15,000 for the monthly, then the remaining or the difference between 20,833 between 15,000 will be given to you in full on my 12 months of payment so that's what we call balloon payment so you're gonna pay this specific amount then there would be a specific time months or years that um, there would be a huge amount that you're gonna pay so that you can cover up for those lapses or for those insufficient payment for the previous year provided that it was approved by the certain financing or developers so that's what you call balloon mortgage. It was also shown here on my presentation. So how it goes like. So there are certain um, 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 time that is just only a very lesser amount. There are also a certain time that will become a um, bigger amount. So that's what we call balloon mortgage. Bridge loan. This is a loan, a short term loan. A homeowner takes out against their property to finance the purchase of another property. It is usually taken for a period of a few weeks or up to three years. So, in a simplest term, you're going to use your other property as a collateral to finance your other property. That is the bridge loan. So, you're going to use your other property as a collateral so that you can have another loan for your new properties purchase. So that's bridge loan. Construction loan, it is a self-built loan or a short-term loan used to finance the construction of a home or real estate project. So usually, there is a program with this one in some of the government sectors like pag ebay that they're gonna have a construction loan program. So if you do have the title of the property or the land that you're gonna want to develop as your housing so you can submit some of the requirements to them then if they're gonna approve they're gonna release certain amount um, in a not little by little but in a phase stage like they're gonna issue for example the total cost of the house that you wanted to construct is 1 million so first they're gonna release at uh, 25%, uh, so you're going to start to construct, uh, example, first floor of your house. Then once you are done with the uh, first phase, you're going to gonna, uh, gonna report to them that we are done. So we wanted to release the second phase or second trends of amount that, we're gonna, that we are applied. So they're going to check the house if there would be some improvements and everything. So that's the time that they're going to release also the second trends, third trends, and fourth trends for your house construction loan so that's it so it is usually goes that kind of arrangements 
then fixed rate mortgage this is a one of the most common types of loans it comes with interest rate that stays the same for the lifetime of the loan so for example your term of loan you applied for 3 million and your term is 20, 20 years loan 20 years loan given the fixed interest rate for 20 years of 6% so meaning to say whatever happens if the if there would be some changes every year when it comes to the financing for example you loan your property in the bank so this year the interest rate of the bank becomes 7% since you are applying for a fixed rate mortgage whatever happens even if the rate becomes higher or lower when when it comes to the that specific year you will your loan will not be affected since you apply for a fixed rate mortgage so if there would be ups and downs when it comes to rates you don't have any problems since you applied for a fixed rate mortgage through the bank or the specific institution that you applied for the financing for your housing or your um, unit loan so that's it that's the good thing when it comes to fixed rate and it stays the same so for example your monthly amortization is 20,000 20,000 until the 20 years that's your monthly amortization it will never change because it is fixed rate mortgage appraiser it's the person whose job is to assess the monetary value of the property so that's easy the appraiser is appraisal it's also determine the value of the property so that's the easiest term and the definition so as an appraiser appraisal these are the factors that you're gonna have uh, these are the factors that can affect when it comes to the appraisal of the property the locations improvements condition market and neighborhood so that's and inspect infrastructures so that's part of the appraisals factors in order that can affect your property's value assessment this is used to determine how much in taxes the owner of property will pay an assessor calculates the assessment of a home value by looking at the comparable homes in your area reviewing and inspection at home in question so usually we have different kinds of taxes in different areas like in the cities like in a certain location because that will affect of the on the assessment of the property that you do have because if there would be some changes improvements when it comes to your area so the appraisal value of the property differs always and that's a good effect if it increases because meaning the value of your property also increases rent to own or lease to own actually this is the uh, most common or most of the people wanted or looking for the um, property that has a rent to own or lease to own why because rent to own is an agreement as deal in which you commit to renting a property for a specific period of time with the option of buying it before the lease runs out so usually rent to own is that you are renting the property and you are up to um, owning it the moment that the period of your renting runs out so usually um, we only have very few or minimal developer offers this kind of rent to own or lease to own payment terms because aside from that there is no down payment there is no huge down payment needed it only requires a very small time for the developer to prepare the unit and aside from that is that actually this, the advantage of this rent to own um there are really a lot of advantage when it comes to the buyer or to the investor because you can occupy the unit uh, by having only a very minimal amount to give or to down to the um, developer or to the owner of the property because that's what we call the rent to own payment terms but on the developer side is that the own uh, they need to have the property ready to own or just we call it's already developed so that they can offer the rent to own payment scheme 
Contract to sell refers to an agreement between a seller and a buyer. The contract shows that the seller promises to sell something to the buyer and the buyer also promises the seller to buy the property. So that's what we call contract to sell. So usually this will be given um, for the developer's side if you're going to purchase a property within the developer. So this is given like one to three months after, that you, after you purchase the property. And Certificate of Eligibility is a certification issued by the bank to ensure that you pass the basic requirements for loan. So usually this is required, um, that some of the developers require certificate, certificate of Eligibility to ensure that the buyer or the investor of the property are eligible to take loan from the bank. But not all of the developers require this one or not all of the companies require this. Clear title, known as just title, good title, or a free and clear title. So a clear title doesn't have any kind of lien or labor from the creditors. It means there's no question of a legal ownership of the property, such as building code, violations, or service. So usually clear title, there's no annotation at the back that the, that the property is still on the, on the mortgage stage. So you should check when you do you have a title that uh, states that this property is un under the mortgage of this specific institution. Principal, it is, principal of a loan is the amount of money owed on that loan. But in a real estate terms, principal is the first buyer or the main buyer of the property. So that's what do you call a principal buyer or principal owner. While co-borrower, if a buyer is having trouble getting approved for loan, they can elicit the help of co-borrower. So this person is usually from a family member or a friend who's added to the mortgage and guarantees loan. So usually, um, co-buyer requires also some documents that the principal buyer required. And co-buyer names also appear on the title of the property that the principal buyer bought because you are part of the co-owner also of the property that's co-buyer this is a housing deed it is a legal document transferring a title from seller to the buyer so it must be written document and is sometimes referred to as the vehicle of the property interest of transfer so actually deed of sale or deed is needed in order for the buyer to trans in order for the seller to transfer the name of the title to the buyer so this is really required when it comes to purchasing the property the title it is a home's title or a condominium title represents the rights of the property those rights are transferred from the seller to the buyer so of course um this document is needed in order for you to show that you are really the owner of the property that is the title transfer of ownership it is in real estate refers to a transfer of property deeds and title from the seller to the buyer of closing of course um from the deed of sale and the title the transfer of ownership will be needed from the seller to the new buyer so that the name of the property will appear no the name of the buyer will appear on the title and the deal of sale. Delinquency, it's a mortgage is considered delinquent when a scheduled payment is not made. If a payment is more than 30 days late, a lender might begin collection or foreclosure proceedings. So usually, delinquency is that um, you are late of the payment. So it's more or less like 30 days or more, the lender or the financing institution who are gonna charge you interest of the property that you purchase equity or the down payment equity or down payment this is really commonly used so usually most of the agents gonna use the term equity but some of the buyers or invest um, newly investors doesn't understand what this equity means so equity in other terms down payment it is the amount of cash a home buyer pays at the time of closing Typical home loans require 20% down payment. So usually, commonly, 
20 to 30 percent down payment required from the developer side or some other developer only required for 5 percent down payment for the property and remaining balance will be through bank financing or an other institution earnest money is a deposit usually one to two percent of the home's total purchase price made by a home buyer at the time they enter into a contract with the seller so usually earnest money happens when the seller of the property is a private um, private owned property because earnest money is not commonly used on the developer side usually they're going to use the equity or the down payment but for those um private owned properties or the single ownership properties they require earnest money so one to two percent in order for them to hold the property under the name of the interested buyers foreclosure if a homeowner doesn't make a mortgage payment usually more or less 90 days, foreclosure is a legal process during which the owner forfeits all their property rights. So that's the foreclosure. Usually banks allows only three months of the delay of the monthly amortization so that they can let the property to become forfeited or foreclosure. Lender in the real estate, the lender refers to individual financing, private group lending company, so a buyer purchases property with expectation of the loan will be repaid with interest in agreed upon increments by a certain date. So those are examples like banks, pag-ibig, so those are the lenders. In-house financing simple means that you borrow money from the property developer, you then make loan and interest payments to the developer. So usually the advantage of the in-house financing is that less requirements for your loan uh, for your loan so if you do have trouble when it comes to complying the requirements so you're gonna go through in-house financing the disadvantage is that they have a higher percentage of rate for the interest lucky in period the period of time in which a borrower cannot repay their loan in full without incurring a penalty fine by the lender so that's what we call lock in period Mortgage is the agreement between a borrower and a lender giving the lender the right to the borrower's property if the borrower is unable to make loan payments with interest within an agreed upon timeline. So that's what we call mortgage. And refinancing, it replaces an existing loan with a new one. Debt is not eliminated when a borrower's refinancing. So usually refinancing happens when a certain institution like bank or pag-ibig gonna offer you a refinancing so usually this has a lower monthly mortgage amortization and faster loan term so for example your term is 10 years loan in bank financing then your monthly is 20,000 with an interest of 8% then in a 3 years time there would be a lower interest like 5% or 6% then the lender or the financial institution offered you 5% for refinancing of your loan so you can apply that one so that uh, you will be having a lower interest plus lower monthly amortization that's what we call refinancing pre-approval so it's pre-approval before submitting an offer in a home or even engaging with a real estate agent you'll likely be required to get pre-approved this means a lender has checked your credit verify your information and approve you for up to specific loan amount for a period of 90 days so actually pre-approval is required for those developer whose property is almost done or almost turned over so they require the specific buyer or investor to get pre-approved first on the financing that they wanted to apply for the mortgage loan so that it's easier and um, do they have a fastest transaction later after the down payment pre-qualification unlike pre-approval pre-qualification is more an estimate of how much you can afford to spend in home so this is this was already done in the bank also for those who want to mortgage through bank financing ROI it is a return on investment or a measurement of how much money or profit is made so how you can how we can compute ROI return of investment computed as 
profit over cost of investment multiplied 100%. So profit is equal to current value less cost of investment. So that's ROI. And LOI stands for letter of intent. Usually this will happen if you are really interested when it comes to purchasing or buying a property, but that property is not yet up to for selling. So in order for you to become the first to line up for the property, when it comes to launching or up to for selling already, so you have to submit a letter of intent to the developer so that um, you will be the first in line to choose or to get the unit that you are interested in. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe. So before I officially end my video, I will leave you this quote. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one.